There's nothing more frustrating than picking up someone else's InDesign file that's been put together incorrectly. And one of the things that goes astray a lot of the time is tabs. People putting spaces in there, people putting multiple tabs when they really only need one. So this episode is all about how to set tabs and there's a few uh, little tricks in there, uh, setting leaders and line on and even some secret tab tricks right at the end there. So you have to watch the whole uh, episode. There's also some very subtle product placement in this episode of Creative Suite TV. Hope you all have a great new year and we'll see you again in 2011. There are many different types of tabs that you can use in InDesign. They've been in there for uh, quite a while. And I think the very first thing that you should do when working with tabs in InDesign is, is probably don't work in preview mode. Uh, so hit W on your keyboard to get out of preview mode. The next thing is you probably want to show the invisible characters because while I, I may have some tabs in here, I think you get the idea, um, we can't really see where they're placed. For example, some people put spaces instead of tabs. So if you're picking up someone else's document, that's really awkward. Uh, we, we'd like to work with actual tabs and do it properly. So the best way to do this is go um, under type and say show hidden characters. And I can zoom it a bit to, to really let you know what's going on here. This hidden character here, that's a tab really easy so if you're picking up someone else's work and and you see oh, rather this business just hitting the space bar uh, that's not the best way to go about setting tabs uh, just hitting the tab key once will suffice and then we can move the tab stops around to make sure that uh, things line up but there are a number of other tabs uh, as well and I'll, I'll show you those as as we go along but First thing that we understand is we'd like to use the tabs to align these four numbers somewhere over here to the right. And I think the fastest way to go ahead and do that, or the most efficient way to go ahead and do that, is use the tab ruler. So under the tab, under the type menu rather, we can go to the tab ruler. And here's the tab ruler. Now the first thing that, that you need to know about the tab ruler is when you bring it out, there are default stops in here. My units are set to millimeters, so that's why um, we've got that set up there. And these little, little, um, tiny little black dots there, they are the default tab stops. This over here is not for good luck, so that's not a horseshoe. It's actually a magnet. So if we'd like to snap it to the top of a frame, so we see where the tabs line up, you select the frame, you hit the magnet, and it lines up. Now because I've already got some tabs inserted there, all I need to do to line these guys up is click in here, drag across the tab to where I'd like those to line up, and there you go. And we can position that anywhere we like. You can set different tabs in here. So we could in fact align, that's aligning to the left. We could align those objects to the center of that tab. And we could also align them to the right of that tab so that if we wanted to adjust that right over. Now one other, one other really important thing that people like to do is assign what's called a tab leader. So from here to here, we'd like to have a character like a dot, you know, like a dot, 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 one. So all you need to do is go into this leader field and type the character that you like. Typically, uh, that would be a dot, and then there you go. There's no restriction saying that you can't put a dot and a space, though, and then that will uh, space them out a little bit more as well. So that's perfectly okay. We can have any set of characters uh, right along there. So now we have our first set of tabs in place. So I'm just going to adjust that a little bit further to the right. If you have repeating tabs, you can set a certain space of tabs. And there is a tiny little flyer menu over here on the right where we are able to repeat uh, tab spacing across. So just in case you were wondering about that, definitely OK. And you can set an exact distance as well by typing in um, a, a measurement uh, right into the X coordinate there and that will appear. Now the next really interesting thing about the tab ruler 
are these two tiny little triangles here right over on the left hand side. These are the indents. So if I come down to this paragraph down the bottom here, and I'm just going to go ahead and select that. And we, we can go ahead and do a first line indent. Okay, so up here in the paragraph controls, we go ahead and select one, two, three millimeters first line indent, and there it is there. Now let's have a look how that affects our tab ruler. You can see the first line indent is with this little triangle. I can actually, if I'm accurate enough, pick it up and drag it across manually forward and back like that. We can even drag in the entire left hand side with the tab ruler this way. So that's kind of exciting as well. We can use these tiny little areas and you have to be pretty accurate where you click but that is the first line indent and I call that a tab as well. Just so we know uh, all of the tabs that we've set so far, uh, the tab leaders, the right indent tab, the first line indent, all of this stuff can be saved as a paragraph style and that's really easy and I always encourage people uh, to set paragraph styles, makes it easy to adjust later on. So we simply select the text there and, and uh, on the paragraph styles panel just go ahead, click new paragraph style and then double click that paragraph style and I'm going to set that as tabs setting one and then of course you can come back and adjust them within the paragraph styles themselves so we can clear them we can set leaders we can do all of that kind of stuff um, within the paragraph style itself so really really easy um, to get that set up same could be done for the first um, indent tab there simply select it click on the new style uh, double click the paragraph style setting there and we'll just say first indent uh, oh I've done, used the wrong thing there so first indent and away we go so we've set two paragraph styles uh, for our tabs the last uh, little tab tricks that I want to show you are a little bit more random, a little bit more secretive. Uh, only a select group of people know these ones. This is just a random uh, right indent tab where we want to take this content where we say tab cola here and push it over to the right hand side. So we're going to split 1963 and tab cola in half. Here's what you do. Insert your cursor uh, before the text you'd like to move and it's a shift tab. And you see we get a different character there. That's what we call a right indent tab. Extremely useful uh, for typesetting. I can move the right hand side of the text frame now and have that align up. Now I'm just going to use the arrow keys to nudge that up. I want that lined up there. And there we go. So that's a right indent tab. Now we've got one last thing. Okay, one last thing. An indent to here character. So we've got a paragraph here um, and I've just put a return there and I want to indent this paragraph to where the cursor is. I'll zoom in. All we need to do is put a shift, no rather, command backslash. Okay, so backslash and that puts like a little crucifix sign in there and we'll indent the rest of the paragraph to wherever your cursor is. Let me show you again. So we'll do a, a really radical one here. Uh, command or control backslash indent to here. It's not really a tab, but it achieves a tabby sort of a feel. So there we go. Uh, once we've got all our tabs set up, we've got all of the tricks. Uh, hopefully um, you enjoy using tabs and hopefully that explains a few things about them. You should be a tab master. And remember, only one, only one calorie.